Hello, guys. Chapter 18, again, there is a lot of, uh, there are lots of good information in this chapter. And it tells you uh, what happens after fertilization, uh, during pregnancy, what happens, what are the stages, and everything else. Of course, as I said, there is a lot of good information in here. I emphasize on the parts that I think they're important. Everything in this chapter is important. You should read it. It's good information for you guys, uh, but uh, you know, just try to know uh, and absorb as much as you can. All right, let's go. This is not, here we go. So the fertilization, you already know that when the sperm enters the egg, that process, it's a process like meiosis, it's a process. Uh, meiosis, as you know, formation of the gametes, sperm or egg or pollen. Uh, so the process of sperm entering the egg is called uh, fertilization. And then, of course, as you know, the end product is zygote. We talked about that. So when sperm enters the egg, after that uh, is a formation of zygote. So here they are, uh, the steps of fertilization. As you know, the sperm has the head, a mid piece, uh, and tail or neck. They call it neck. And uh, yeah, there are, you might see it in some textbooks. They might call it neck, uh, head, neck, tail. And the mid piece has a lot of mitochondria, provides ATP energy for the sperm to uh, use its tail and find its way into the egg. Okay, so in the head, of course, at the tip of the head, I talked about all of this, it is acrosomal sac, and then uh, it dissolves the, uh, it dissolves the outer layer of the uh, egg. And finally, uh, the only piece that gets inside of the egg is the head, the, the chromosomes, the 23 chromosomes. The nucleus has only part of the sperm that has contributed to like, oh, yes. Okay, and then uh, steps of fertilization. Oh, these are the two layers of the egg that uh, the egg is surrounded by zona uh, pellucida, uh, pellucida and uh, corona radiata. So, and then the sperm has to dissolve these two layers, uh, penetrate into the corona radiata, and only one sperm can enter the egg. Um, anyhow, the acrosomal sac, as I said, it has a lot of enzymes outside of the head of the sperm, you all know this, this is acrosomal sac, and then it dissolves when it reaches the egg, it dissolves uh, the outer layer of the egg, and then uh, eventually a plasma membrane of the egg uh, and fuses into the sperm and the egg, the fusion of the two nuclei follows. Okay, right here, this shows you all of the steps. Again, uh, these are some of the things I think we talked about in the past. The polyspermy, prevention of the polyspermy, uh, when the sperm enters the egg, uh, then there is no other sperm. When one sperm enters, there is no other sperm. There are no other sperms that can enter the egg. Uh, the egg's plasma membrane depolarizes prevention of the binding of the any uh, other sperm. Vesicles called uh, con uh, cortical granules releases enzymes that causes the zona uh, pellucida, uh, pellucida to become an impermeable fertilization membrane. Yes, all of that good information. Okay, pre-embryonic and embryonic development. Let's talk about those. A human, um, these are all a process of development. Uh, in the lab, we do have oh, cleavage. Well, um, hang on, I'm sorry about that. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, cleavage is when the zygote divides and become two cells, four cells, eight cells. Sorry about that. Um, uh, so that process is cleavage. But when the growth is the cells are kind of growing, uh, multiplying, you know, a little bit into the embryo em embryology, embryonic development, then uh, that is called growth. And morphogenesis, when the embryo changes its shape, um, you know, from being a little uh, blood clot to a human uh, like this. So that is called morphogenesis. And I hope these chapters 
uh, opens up all of these three terms for you. Let's talk about cleavage a little bit. Right here, the steps of, uh, of cleavage, if you would, see, uh, when the sperm enters the egg, of course, only one sperm can enter the egg and uh, a zygote it becomes two cells. That's a step of cleavage by process of mitosis. So what is happening here is mitosis. So two cells become four cells, mitosis again. Four cells become eight cells, mitosis again. So all of that is mitosis. And the early embryonic development that is called cleavage. So after cleavage, we talked about it in the last slide, if you would, it is the growth. So the baby, the embryo is growing and becomes blastula, a ball of cell that inside of it is hollow, right? Here is a hollow and then you have inner mass cells. Okay, that inner mass cells becomes the actually you, okay? So, and that it adheres, it attaches, implement, that's a term we use uh, to the wall of the uterus and it will, um, and we'll go ahead and form the, the last stage, which is morphogenesis. After growth, you have morphogenesis, which occurs, you know, you start developing the heart and then the brain and so on and so forth. Uh, Pre-embryonic development, you saw it in the last uh, diagram is about uh, week one, and that's what it takes place during the cleavage, and it says it in here, didn't they say that? A time frame? No, it didn't say the time frame. That's what it is. It's pretty much uh, this area, week one, you have it pretty much all of this. Okay, and then embryonic development is a from, from, uh, weeks, uh, from weeks two to, to eight. Okay, more you lot, that's what I want you to know. These are in the lab, we have models for you guys to um, study and know these, uh, know them. So more after one zygote, one cell become two cells, two cells become four cells, four cells becomes eight cells. Then you have a ball of cells that the ball of cells inside of it is also full of cells, like, um, like a golf ball, like a baseball. Inside of it is full, okay? So that is called morula. And then after Morila, the cells that keep still multiplying. And remember, Morila, blastocyst, they're almost same size as the egg. They have not, they have not, they, they, uh, the Morula has not become huge or blastocyst. They're same size as, almost same size as the egg. Okay, look at the models we have in the lab. Look at the microscopic slides we have. And then what happens uh, during the Morula, uh, you know, it's a ball of cells, inside is full of cells, then they, the cells keep multiplying and inside of the cell becomes hollow, okay? Then that's blastocyst, okay? And then, of course, inside of the blastocyst cells, in case of human, you have an accumulation of cells in here, and that's called inner cell mass. And uh, the inner cell mass will become embryo, and uh, later the cells becomes the chorion, the, uh, and the layer of the cells. He's talking about identical twin and um, a, a fraternal twin. Uh, so fraternal twin and identical twin, let's go over it. When you have zygote right here, that zygote in case of I'm explaining identical twin. So you have the zygote in here and the zygote divides into two cells and each one of these cells still have the 46, 46 chromosomes. And each one of them develop to become a separate person, but they are exactly identical, okay? But in case of a fraternal twin, when you have two uh, eggs uh, fertilized by two sperm, so definitely then the zygote has not divided to two. You have two eggs, and two sperms are fertilizing them. So that is the two, the two twins are not identical to each other. They look different, okay? So that is called fraternal twin. Two eggs, two sperms, fraternal twin, um, one egg, one sperm, the zygote actually divides once before it divides completely again. 
uh, that's called identical twin. Okay. Um, extra embryonic uh, membrane. Uh, so uh, the placenta is formed. So yeah, this is important. I would like you to know something about these things. Um, so the chorion develops into the uh, fetal half of the placenta, uh, the organs that provides the embryo fetus. Uh, so placenta is providing um, the hormones and nourishment uh, for the embryo. Chorionic uh, villi, uh, finger-like projections uh, of the chorion, you will see a pictures of them, and blood vessels within the chorion villi continues with umbilical cord. Right here, that's what the uh, finger-like projections he was talking about. So here's a yolk sac, um, here's a chorion, is a uh, layer, these are protective layers, the chorion, amnion, amniotic fluid. Uh, these are the layers that are protecting as a shock absorbance. Uh, protecting the embryo. Okay, having said that, then you have the allantois, which I will elaborate on that later on, um, and then you will see what the functions of allantois and all that is. Uh, back into the extra embryonic um, membranes, so allantois extends uh, away from the uh, embryo and um, later it gives rise to urinary bladder. Okay, so uh, the um, the blood exchanges occurs through allantois and also allantois by itself later on becomes bladder. Its blood vessels uh, become the umbilical uh, uh, blood vessels, which uh, takes blood, in, uh, in blood to and from the fetus. Umbilical arteries carry oxygen poor, opposite of what we human are, normal, uh, well, the embryo is also human, but the embryo, uh, the uh, circulation in the embryo is opposite. I think I talked about all of this. So umbilical arteries carry oxygenated poor, the oxygenated blood, and umbilical vein, they carry oxygenated rich blood. They have a lot of oxygens in the blood. So extra yolk sac, again, continuing on extra embryonic development, um, uh, first sites for uh, blood formation, an amnion uh, contains the amniotic fluid uh, to cushion the and protect the embryo. Okay, second week, uh, uh, at, at the end of the first week, uh, we have implementation. You know, the blastocyst attaches the wall of the uterus. Remember, we told you that this is the blastocyst right here, and this is the wall of the uterus attaches to it. Okay, that's called implementation. And then uh, the woman is now clinically uh, pregnant and then um, HCG is secreted. Ectopic pregnancy, if, for example, if this is the, if this is, if my uh, hand is the um, ovary and this is the oviduct, fallopian tube, what if the embryo, the fertilized uh, egg, the zygote stays here and keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. That is called ectopic pregnancy. It means out of place. The preg this should not, and it's very dangerous. The women do not recognize it. They feel some pain, they move on. And it happened in the past. Um, I don't know the numbers now. It can happen still in the United States. We are, US is an advanced country. We, people, women should not die off of this but it still happens. Again, I don't know the stats. Of course, the embryo is not viable anymore. And sometimes if it is caught early uh, by surgery, they can bring the embryo and put them in the uterus right here. But I doubt that you talk to experts, they say, well, oh, that's, that's tough. That's, uh, um, they should let this pregnancy go and then try another pregnancy. So it can happen, ectopic pregnancy. You probably have heard about it um, a lot in the past. So second week during implementation, the chorion secretes enzymes to digest away the uterine, uh, some of the uh, tissues. And then, as I said, HCG, um, human chorio uh, chorionic uh, gonadotropin hormone. And that's the hormone we use to buy pregnancy kit and then detect uh, from our urine uh, I say nothing. 
other urine and human, however we're talking, I'm talking about people. Uh, we did take uh, the presence of a uh, baby in us. Uh, again, a good kid is more important than buying it from somewhere cheap. Make sure you are buying something that is not uh, a past date. Gastrulation, okay. So if you have the um, blastocyst, a ball, which there are cells inside of it, uh, and inside is a uh, fluid field right here. This is a fluid field in here. So when the cell starts multiplying and multiplying, and then they do call this invagination, they, when they invaginate, they start folding inward. That is gastrulation. This is glastula. This is morula. I'm going backward. And this is zygote, okay? Morula, glastula, and gastrula, okay? So um, gastrulation in mass becomes uh, folded and then the cells become tissues and called primary germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm, which I will talk about that, that's important. I would like you to know that. So these are his stages of embryonic development is putting a summarizing for you. This is important, you guys. I would like you to know there are quiz questions from it, exam questions from it. So what happens, there are three germ layers, the outside ectoderm, middle layer, mesoderm, and inside layer, endoderm. So three germ layers. The outside becomes your skin and your nervous system, ectoderm. The, in, the middle one becomes your heart, your muscles, your, um, you know, most of the structures, your bones, everything in here, uh, they listed in here for you guys. That's the uh, you know, mesoderm. And endoderm becomes your glands, your respiratory system, your liver, your uh, digestive system. So that's endoderm. There is a table right here. I would like to study that, make sure you know it. I picked one of these things. For example, respiratory tracts, it comes from where? Respiratory tracts come from endoderm, okay? I might say uh, your um, cardio, your skin, uh, the dermis of the skin, sorry. The dermis of the skin, I was wrong, the skin. Yes, the, as you know, the skin, you have the epidermis, dermis, and uh, hypodermis. So the middle layer of the skin, it comes from mesoderm. And the outer layer of the skin, epidermis, right here, it comes from ectoderm. So make sure each and every one of them, you should know. Okay, third week, the nervous system is first organ system um, to appear. And then um, heart is also, I bolded for you guys, I would like you to know this, that the heart develops in the third week uh, and fourth weeks of the pregnancy. That's when the heart starts uh, beating. Uh, the nervous system uh, settles in a little bit, not completed and not completely finished with nervous system, but uh, by fourth week, uh, that's uh, 28 days, 29 days, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, uh, so the heart is star speeding. Okay, uh, and the future umbilical cord um, connects to embryo to chorion, yes, becomes uh, uh, called chorionic villi and umbilical cord for connecting the developing embryo and so on and so forth, yes. Uh, this diagram, uh, it's good, it explains a few things if you guys want to uh, study them and make sure you know it. By fifth week, and then, uh, you know, these guys from this on, I don't think I will ask you that what happens during fifth week, six weeks, all organ systems have been established by six weeks. Yes, these are the highlights I would like you to know, um, and I'm emphasizing on it. So all of your organ system has been established by six weeks. Not necessarily they have grown to its full capacity, okay? So that's what I mean. All of the organ systems uh, have, uh, you can uh, see them, um, detect them. Okay, so uh, let's move on to uh, fetal development and see what happened, placenta. Uh, the source of progesterone and estrogen. I think I talked about that. They continue the pregnancy. Uh, by this time, uh, the um, uh, corpus luteum has disappeared. Okay, so uh, that's the uh, uh, the function of placenta takes place. 
And here they are, more functions of uh, uh, placenta. They are harmful um, during smoking, alcohol. Uh, they do pass uh, through placenta and some uh, microorganisms also can pass through like Toxoplasma gondii. It can pass uh, through placenta and uh, fetus. Um, so uh, here, you know, make sure you read these uh, PowerPoints, again, I'm trying to keep the time uh, on the lower. Uh, the placenta and fetal circulations, um, um, I talked about this a little bit, but uh, let's talk about fetal circulations. The umbilical vein enters the liver and joints and ductus uh, venosus. Uh, so all of these are, uh, so uh, the blood of, the one thing that you should know definitely, I'm zip zapping through these informations. Um, one thing you should know that the mother's blood and fetus blood do not mix up. Okay, so how does the question is how does the fetus uh, receives nutrient through the placental wall? Okay, so read your note, read these powerpoints, and make sure um, you can um, talk about. Uh, yeah, you would know what is going on. Okay. okay, guys. Um, so, uh, circulatory system uh, changes occurs, and uh, <clears throat> um, so let's move on. Um, preventing and testing uh, for uh, birth defects. So um, did he mentioned, he's mentioning your textbook, mentioning uh, two birth defects, but uh, I went uh, looked at the end of chapters. Uh, there are two tests that can be done to detect a uh, birth defect, and it's not in this uh, uh, chapter. I don't know why your textbook did not mention them. Uh, but anyhow, um, spin up probably you, uh, Bifidio uh, is the, uh, you probably have heard of these spin up. Uh, Bifidia is a part of vertebral column fails to develop and uh, cannot protect the spinal cord. So, and then an in front of the word, it means without right here. And encephaly is, um, is most of the fetal brain fails to develop and infants are stillborn. You've heard of that stillborn uh, or, or live only a few days after. Okay, again, uh, use of alcohol, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, FAS. Uh, uh, there, there are good information in here. And the cocaine, um, of course, competes with the oxygen. So that's why consumption of cocaine, alcohol, and other, other drugs, other recreational drugs should not be used during pregnancy. Uh, fetal development, third, ninth month, uh, human fetus looks like human. So anyhow, uh, third and fourth month, um, again, uh, if you guys want to know this, uh, sure, uh, Fontanalis is, um, skull has a six large membrane called, areas called Fontanalis. So, uh, the, you know, these are some of information. I'm not too sure if you wanna go um, a C-section, I bolded for you guys. So what happens during birth, um, um, if there's some complications, what they do, they open up the um, a cesarean, as the name of the person who discovered this came up with the idea, and they open up the uh, uterine wall. And then, of course, the baby is delivered from, from there, not from the birth canal. Um, so that's the uh, C-section. Uh, C-section is the abbreviation for cesarean. Cesarean was the name of the person, as I said, uh, discovered this method. Okay, the next one is important. Uh, I would like to take some time and talk about it um, because of psychology majors. A lot of psychology majors uh, uh, take this class. So I like to emphasize on it a little bit uh, before I go to <clears throat> Before I finish the chapter, that would be the end of the chapter. So 
The SRY gene, it's a gene that determines the gender of the baby. As you know, the females are X, X, and males are X, Y. That's the best way I can say it, X, Y. So what happens on the Y chromosomes, uh, a gene exists called sex determining regions of the Y chromosomes. That's what the SRY uh, stands for, sex uh, region uh, Y. Okay, sex determining uh, region and determines whether male or female uh, organ organs uh, develop. So what happens during the first weeks, it is impossible the first uh, few weeks, uh, six weeks actually, uh, it's impossible to tell a male for female. Okay, you can't. You do ultrasounds on the babies early on and so on and so forth. You can't tell the sex of the baby and we'll see it one. Gonads do not develop until the seventh week. That's true. So at the beginning, it's indifferentiated. Uh, you cannot tell the difference between male and female up to seventh week. In seventh week, you go in there and you do the ultrasounds or so, or eighth week to be safe. Uh, ninth week, then you can tell the sexes. The tissue of the gonad is called indifferent. Uh, and then, um, um, oh, uh, at six weeks, the male and female have the same type of ducts, uh, Mullerian, Wolfian ducts, and you will see it in a, uh, here in the uh, next the PowerPoint. And here they are, six weeks, they have both. Male and female, they have both Mullerian and Wolfian ducts. And what happens after six weeks, the, uh, the male who have the SRY gene with the Y chromosome, okay? So if the father had, in the sperm, they had the X chromosome, the baby becomes X, uh, female. If the father had Y chromosome, then uh, the baby becomes boy. You already know that. If not, we get into genetics, we talk about it. So the Y chromosome comes from the male, okay? And the baby turns into a male. If the X chromosome comes from the father, then that's a baby. But now, so since the Y chromosome came from the male and it has the gene S SRY, then these events occur, a few events occur, and you have a male at the end. If the father came up with the X chromosome, then these sequence of events occur because there is no SRY gene anymore, absent, SRY gene absent. So when the SRY gene is absent, there is no Y chromosome, the gene on Y chromosome, that's what becomes A female. Okay, so normal development of sex, something, uh, I know there is in Bay Area, there is a clinic, uh, they go ahead, um, they separate the male, uh, the X chromosome from uh, Y chromosomes, they have tests uh, to do it. And then they, you know, if you want a baby boy, they take the Y chromosomes and they put it in the female egg. So it is possible. Uh, is it possible to determine the sex? Yes, it costs ten thousand uh, dollars. Last I knew this information ten years ago, so I don't know how much it is now. I don't know. Maybe they became more efficient. It's less. You never know. Uh, but um, anyhow, let's move on. So internal sex organs. We are continuing the um, SRY gene is present. Then a test is. Uh, uh, testes determining factors induces the formation of the testes. Then testosterone is produced by uh, testes, stimulates the Wolfian ducts. So the testosterone, or testosterone right here, uh, stimulates a Wolfian ducts to become male gen uh, genital ducts. And then the anti Mullerian hormone causes the Mullerian ducts to regress. And then, uh, of course, it becomes a uh, female. The normal development of sex chromosomes, internal sex organs uh, con uh, uh, concluded, I guess this is talking the last page, uh, in the absence of SRY ovaries rather than the testes develop, of course, uh, we talked about that. And Wolfian ducts, yes, okay, important. Uh, Wolfian ducts regress 
since there is no testosterone, the Mullerian ducts uh, turn into uterus and uh, uh, uterine tubes. Okay. So it's a Mullerian um, ducts eventually become uterus and uterine tube and so on and so forth. Okay. At 14 weeks, the gonads are uh, inside the abdominal cavity toward the uh, testes and descends and scrotal sacs. So you can do ultrasounds and determine the sex of the baby. External organs, uh, sex organs uh, also in different at first. Uh, six weeks are small, but appears and so on and so forth. Nine weeks, your genital groups. Okay, these are some of them. Uh, I'm not. Okay, external organs continued. Um, uh, well, this is important at the end right here of the slide. I would like you to know something about these. These changes are due to the presence of absence of the hormone DHT, dihydro. Uh, testosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is a hormone which makes the adrenal glands and prostate glands uh, from uh, testosterone. So that hormone is um, important as far as the um, uh, developing the sex of the baby. So uh, abnormal development of sex organs are um, you can have XY female. Yes, it is possible. It's a female with XY. And then, uh, as I said, female in uh, normal uh, is XX and male in normal is XY. And then we do have XX male syndrome, okay? So we haven't, you haven't talked about this in biology one. I, we'll talk about it. That's deletion and that's translocation of the pieces of chromosomes occurs um, and deletion, just a piece of chromosome is uh, deleted. See, female is supposed to be XX. So what happens that this is deletion, that piece of chromosome is deleted. And then of course, this individual is XY, okay? During the processes that happens, um, well, anyhow, uh, but I don't wanna get into biology one. But <laughs> So, okay. So right here, abnormal development of sex organs. Um, uh, so uh, the continuation from the last one, testosterone stimulus development of epididymis, vas deferens, uh, differentia, and then uh, seminal vesicles in ejaculate. Anti-Mullerian hormones prevents further development of female structures. Again, we are talking about the XX and XY uh, abnormal. In cases of XX, is supposed to be a female, but it's a male, and XY is supposed to be a male, but it's a female. That's because of these. And then uh, dihydrotestosterone uh, directs the development of urethra, prostate glands, penis, and uh, sport. Ambiguous sex determination, of course, those are um, other uh, things that can happen and androgen insensitivity, these are all um, other effects that can happen. Uh, let's talk about pregnancy a little bit. I'm not going to go to details of what happens, digestive system and nutrition. Uh, these are the hormones, okay? Again, progesterone, estrogens, and peptide hormones increase insulin. Uh, so make sure you know the effects of these hormones. Uh, circulatory system, what happens uh, during uh, the uh, pregnancy and uh, still other effects uh, here. Uh, I don't, other effects, other effects, uh, uh, false labor, uh, it's called Braxton, uh, Braxton Hicks uh, contractions. Uh, you might get that uh, sometime during pregnancy you might bleed. If you do bleed, that's not a period. That's not normal. You should go see a doctor. Um, so all of the uh, uh, menstruation by pregnancy should stop. Some, some women after two, three months into pregnancy, uh, they start having menstruation. That's not normal. It's not menstruation. It's bleeding. You got to go see a doctor. Birth. Um, 
I think I talked about this in a previous oxytocin is released to cause the contractions of the uterus and uh, the positive feedback. We talked about all of this. So uh, uterus is being, uh, is pushing the fetus out. Uh, parturation is the process of giving birth. That's a scientific name. It's called parturation, <clears throat> giving birth. So um, effacement is the stage one. So there are three stages. Uh, into pregnancy, the first one is called effacement. And let's go over it. I'll, that's all I like to emphasize and talk about these phases. Uh, phase one, phase two, stage one, stage two, phase one, phase two, phase three, stage one, stage three. Some, some text me say stage, the text me say stage, some text me say phase. Okay. In phasement, uh, it is the cervical canal disappear and due to uterine contractions. And if the amniotic membrane has not already ruptured, the amniotic fluid comes out, it's supposed to, it will, it should be by now. Uh, the practitioner, sometimes it's time, they poke it and it will burst open. And amniotic fluid leaks out, uh, vagina, uh, it breaks water. You know, but the first stage of parturition ends uh, once the cervix uh, is dilated completely. Right here, um, there is a plug, uh, cervical plug in here that should come out also. That cervical plug, it prevents the bacteria and uh, sperm enters the uh, uterus. Stage two, uh, uterine contraction occurs uh, every two to th every one to two minutes uh, boy, and lasts one minute each time, accompanied by a desired uh, by desire push, so use close push. Episiotomy, that is, uh, they would like to make an incision on one side, sometimes on both sides, I doubt it on both sides, but uh, they make an incision um, of a, a vaginal so the baby can come out um, easier, used to speed the childbirth, so it's called episiotomy. And right here, possibly they cut off a little bit here so the baby can come out and then uh, some, they go back uh, and they suture it later or not. Um, it depends on the practitioner. Stage three, uh, the afterbirth, they call it. And uh, so stage two, that is when the baby actually being delivered. So stage three is afterbirth where the placenta needs to come out. If the placenta does not come out, then Houston, we've got problem. Uh, you know, the bacteria grows, infection grows, and women die all over the world right now. People, women are dying because uh, the placenta has not been removed, okay? If it, it's not removed, that's a foreign tissue, body starts fighting it off, and uh, uh, so it has to be removed. Aging, the, interesting, your text, we talked about aging, the very last section of this chapter, um, so gerontology, I would like you to know that, study of uh, aging. So uh, progress changed from infancy until uh, death. Uh, what happens, this is important, I would like you to know this, our chromosomes, as we age, you know, a little piece at the end gets cut off. A little piece gets cut off. A little piece gets cut off. A little piece gets cut off. And those pieces are called telomeres. Okay, now there, are, there is an enzyme which we have it in our sperm and egg. Uh, they, uh, it's called telomerase, right here, ace at the end of the word. And that, and of course, cancer cells have them. Uh, so that does not, it, it synthesizes the ends. Okay, so when we are aging, we are losing the length of our chromosomes. It's becoming shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. Okay, so, um, but some people are trying to uh, make this hormone and give it to people. So we have all these thermolases in the board. I don't know, it has not, yeah. anyhow, I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> Mitochondria generates uh, free radicals. So if we eat a lot of food that are high calories, what happens, mitochondria makes this uh, free radical. Uh, they're not good for you, they're bad. Uh, so the lesser of them you have in your body, um, the healthier you are. So anyhow, 
these free radicals can damage our tissues and cells. And so in tegumentary system, uh, he has a list down of what happens to our skin. In tegumentary system, it means our skin, okay? So, and then cardiovascular system, he has a list of what's happening in the immune system. One thing you learned in the past, your thymus gland right here, it shrinks as you age. So digestive system, he has a list. And then respiratory system, excretory system, your bladder and so on and so forth. Nervous system, uh, your senses, your, by age 40, you get glasses, uh, Chris of here. Uh, muscular, uh, muscular skeletal system, and so on and so forth is continuing. Endocrine system, reproductive system, and Alzheimer. He's talking about Alzheimer. What happens uh, in case of Alzheimer? Of course, these are uh, molecules that are put in axol membrane, and then you know, again, Alzheimer is all theory. I wish uh, we knew exactly what is going on with Alzheimer. All right, guys, uh, that's the end of chapter. I hope I didn't talk too much and